Carroll. My topic is theme and variations for the developing pianist, exploring the genre through intermediate piano repertoire. The reason I chose this topic is because it centers on my teaching interest, which is repertoire for the intermediate level, and it correlates with the repertoire I chose to play for the performance side of this project, which is Variations in Fuga, Theme by Handel by Johannes Brahms, and Three Variations by Federica Montu. Theme of variations are a genre that has always been valued among classical composers throughout history. And from my research, I've found that there is extensive writing on theme and variation already, but not so much from a pedagogical standpoint. So that is what I'm here to share with you today. The purpose of this presentation is to bring light uh, some gems of the theme and variation repertoire for intermediate students while demonstrating effective methods for teaching, practicing, and performing these pieces. I will be organizing this lecture first with an overview of variation form and the theme and variation genre. I'll talk about the history and define some relevant terms. I'll talk about the variants or modifications made when you're varying themes. And then I'll go into the specifics about three example pieces by Kohler, Stoyanov, and Monte, followed by some discussion on how to teach these pieces. In this presentation, the word variation will come up a lot. It might completely lose all meaning by the end of this presentation, but bear with me, I will try not to let that happen. Here I will establish a few words to know during this lecture. Variation is simply a formal technique where material is repeated in an altered form. So it's a, music, it's a repetition of a musical theme with some elements modified. This could be a different rhythm, an embellishment to the melody, new harmonies, key, tempo, and more. Then when I talk about theme and variation, I'm referring to the genre, the type of piece, in which it starts you off with a simple melody. It could be a folk song or a different composer's theme that they favored. And that melody gets repeated several times in a slightly different way each time. And you have a theme and variation piece. Just a bit of trivia for you. The first known variation set ever written was Diferencias for Vihuela by Luis de Narvaez in 1538. So if that ever comes up on Jeopardy, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> variation pieces officially came about in the 16th century, but the concept of varying the main melody had been around for many more years before that. So throughout history, other variation trends appeared including brown bass, passacaglia, chaconne. I grouped those together because those three are forms based on brief ostinato motifs forming a harmonic basis. Then the folia and romanesca are melodic harmonic formulas that were popular in the Renaissance and Baroque. And then lastly, in theme and variations, the fundamental musical idea on which the rest of the piece is built is the melody. Some of the most significant theme and variations for keyboard in the standard repertoire are the Bach Goldberg variations, Chopin, La Cidre and La Mano, Beethoven, Diabelli, Mozart, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and of course, Brahms Handel variations, which you will hear in the second half. Now on to the types of different variants or modifications to the theme. These are categorized into melodic, rhythmic, harmonic, and structural variants. So we'll start with melodic. A melodic variant is basically any changes to the main melody. So notes can be added, subtracted, or rearranged. So this simple group of three notes becomes six notes up here. But you can hear the integrity of the original melody within it. Now the example in the top right, uh, rhythmic variants, these alter the note values and sometimes the meter. So here, three quarter notes become a syncopated alternation of eighths and thirds. But again, it embodies the theme. 
Moving on to harmonic variance, this is when the underlying chord progression is altered. So in this case, you see a C major C signature. Does anyone recognize that one? <laughs> and the variation you see is in C minor. So it's a simple mode switch from major to minor. And then lastly, structural variance. These are to do with the organization of the variations themselves, including legato, staccato, or other phrasing changes. So in this example, this detached motif, To understand how to teach theme and variations, um, one must have a knowledge of the criteria for difficulty. The teacher must consider where the student is at in terms of level and examine the following elements in any given piece. You have to consider the piece's demands from a performer. Starting with theory and harmony. Some questions would be, does the piece use diatonic harmony and or chromatic harmony? Basically, how much are we staying in the home key? How complex is the key signature? Are there discernible chords that can be analyzed? In regards to technique, does the piece require a large hand? Is it heavy on scales and ornamental figures? Is the tempo demanding for dexterity? As for texture, does the piece use homophonic texture, where there's one melody with accompaniment? Or is it polyphonic, where there's two or more voices? Are thick textures used? Again, considering the size of the student's hand. Then regarding rhythms, what is the smallest note value a student must know to play this piece? This is specifically for the early levels who have not yet even covered all of the note values. Uh, what is the time signature and the meter? In other words, how are the beats grouped? Are there complex rhythms, such as polyrhythms or syncopation? Then, ornamentation. How many different types of ornaments are indicated, and how much technical dexterity will be required? On to sound production. Does the piece require a large dynamic range? And how much variety of tone color is needed? Which brings us to, lastly, musicality. In terms of musicality, the teacher needs to think of the student's capacity for bringing their own unique interpretation to the piece. Feeling mood, exhibiting character, having a sense of push and pull of the tempo, and praising, following the contour of the melodic line, and so forth. These address the student's artistry. On to the analysis of the pieces themselves and how to teach them. I'll be starting on the most elementary of all of the pieces. This is the theme and variation in G major, opus 249, by romantic composer Louise Kohler. Kohler was a piano pedagogue and published this piece in a method book he called uh, Practical Method for the Pianoforte in 1894. So you can see it's one page, one variation, so it's not theme and variation, it's theme and variation. So it's safe to say that this short, piece is, this short piece was written with beginners in mind. It even accounts for small hand spans, and it stays in the five finger positions. This piece represents a student's first potential exposure ever to theme variations. It is a simple melody in the right hand, forming the theme, accompanied by broken chords in the left hand. Color indicates that the key is G major, the key signature, and G is the pedal tone is used throughout the piece. So in the left hand, it does not require the hand to extend beyond the five finger position. I will demonstrate this piece for you.
In order to teach this piece, I would first divide up the piece into four strips of paper to allow the student to more easily compare theme to variation visually. So that PowerPoint magic, I spoiled it. Here we go. Do you see that? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say how long that took me to figure out. <laughs> now uh, let's isolate the first parts of each to compare and contrast. This is measures one through four, and then this is measures nine through 12. The first step, I would work with the student on identifying what exactly gets changed in the variation. There's no need for the student at this early level to know about the classification, the variance that we talked about. Um, just ask the student in isolated examples. Right? What is the difference between the material and the red circles? And they should tell you it goes from quarter notes to eighth notes, something as simple as that. So teachers, you and I would know that as a rhythmic variance, uh, but they don't have to know that. Then have them take a look at the yellow circles. What's the difference between the material here, you'd ask? And the good answer would be that now the C and the D become blocked instead of broken, and so on. Next, I would have them look at the harmony and label Roman numerals 1 and 5 throughout. This um, helps them learn to recognize harmonies in different patterns and makes it a habit to start observing patterns in every piece they play. Then, only after they've done this, it's finally time for them to try it out on the piano. I would advise my earlier level students to learn the theme fully before going on to learn the variation. Alternatively, this would make excellent sight reading material for a slightly later intermediate student. This piece, written by a lesser known Bulgarian composer named Andrei Stoyanov, is a haunting and beautiful theme made even more interesting with character changes in each variation. Dobry Kristov was a major Bulgarian composer of the 20th century, so using this tune was an homage to him. At the heart of the composition is a simple chord progression made distinct in its character by its minor mode. The simple harmony and clear melodic variance make it an appropriate step up from the kolar. It increases in length and duration from the kolar by one variation and two pages, and it adds complexity, of course. Once the student has learned more key signatures and can play in the key of D minor and comfortably shift from one five-finger position to another, they are equipped to play this piece. No knowledge of rhythms beyond eighth notes and dotted quarters are required, so rhythmically it's not too much of a challenge. The last variation requires fluency in a B melodic minor scale in both hands. To teach this piece, the first step I would have a student do But hear me out. Um, you establish with them one, six, four, five, one. All white keys. It stays in their mind. You never forget heart and soul. So now, treating the Stoyanov piece like we just did the Kohler, 
have the student look at the score and analyze the chords. One. is Federico Mompu's Three Variations. Mompu was a 20th century Catalan composer, and his style was very much French Impressionist influence. He was known as a miniaturist, and he liked to write intimate and improvisatory sounds of music. The pianist Stephen Hoff wrote a fantastic program note that I would like to read to you while demonstrating excerpts of his piece. in spite of the abstract sounding title, belongs to the same family as the other cycles. After a one finger theme, there follow three variations, contrasted variations. The soldiers, courtesy, and nocturne, which are like a miniature anthology of the three musical styles of Mambo. The first is in his typical, naive, primitive style, with its echoes of Sati. These children are dressed as soldiers, not fighting men. <laughs> is a suave seductive waltz, which folds the theme in a succulently rich harmonic sauce, a reminder perhaps that Poulenc was a neighbor in Paris. And the third variation, originally called the toad and later the frog for some unknown reason, is akin to the mystical pieces, with its gentle, undulating accompaniment, weaving a magic carpet of sound in the trance transformed theme. <laughs> set, we'll be abandoning all Roman numeral analysis for now. This is a student's opportunity to experiment with character and mood changes. The skills worked on would be listening to the melody, producing different timbre in multiple parts, a high level of expressivity but with explicit instruction on the score. Students can go either way with that, having more expressivity but less freedom, if that makes sense. Students must be able to read on three staves at once. They need to have precise control over the lower range of dynamics and have the ability to shape the phrases consistently. For memory, since the traditional harmonies are not there, it has to be approached from a melodic standpoint. Using the theme as the, variation, the basis for the structure, especially for the nocturne, will be helpful in internalizing and memorizing this music. So, we know that theme and variations have long been valued by composers as a way to showcase their creative facility in their compositional style, and teachers can appreciate them for their ability to serve as a comprehensive tool for students to improve various skills at the piano. Additionally, the learning process is smooth with theme and variations. They're naturally segmented in nature. And the repertoire is substantial and appropriate for recitals and competitions. 
Learning these pieces in the intermediate level lays a solid foundation for learning some of the masterworks of the human narration genre. My hope is for teachers to continue to explore this genre and uncover even more wonderful pieces. I'd like to take this moment now to say thank you to my committee members, Professor Ming An, Professor Allison Edwards, and Dr. Rob Watson. Thank you for guiding me through this process. And also a thank you to Dr. John Cable, graduate coordinator, and a big thank you to my family, friends, colleagues, and even some students and their families who came out tonight. Thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you all after the intermission.